my channel so today for you guys I am going to be showing you how to create this like farmhouse industrial shelf unit don't know exactly what to call it I see these things all the time and I've always wanted one but I haven't really ran into them at pretty much any store other than Kirkland's so I'm going to show you how to make this using mainly Dollar Tree products and you can make it for as little as eight bucks last week I showed you guys how to make this ladder and you can make that for as little as five dollars and now I did the shelf and look at this background it's looking really 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 cute this thing people were asking about I did not make that but I got it at Burlington for ten dollars so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please give a thumbs up let's see if we can get this video to 5,000 thumbs up especially if you enjoy more so like the decor pieces that are on like the furniture side instead of like tiny little things I've been trying to make bigger things that take a bigger space rather than I don't know tiny little pieces so let's see if we can get this video to 5,000 thumbs up also make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not and click the bell button so you're notified every single time that I upload with that being said let's begin the video okay so if you're just trying to make this only from Dollar Tree products you can get their images that are almost like shadow boxes they are thicker material than the canvas images Dollar Tree normally carries you can then glue two of them together using a 6000 if you want to make it close to the sizes of my shelves you will need at least four images to do this two images for each shelf that's four dollars spent right there at Dollar Tree or you can go to a hardware store pick up an inexpensive piece of wood that for sure will cost you less than the four dollars you spent at Dollar Tree and get something more solid and not as hollow I got this one by six foot common board at Home Depot it was three dollars and sixty cents you can have it cut down there for free to the measurements you want or you can go to Lowe's and have it cut down there as well for free so I did two 14 inch pieces with that wood we have a circular saw at home so Matt cut it down for me if you do not have access to a hardware store it's a long way away from you and you have easier access to a Dollar Tree you can substitute the shelves with the images but if you have access to a hardware store I just recommend going and getting real wood if you use the images from Dollar Tree remember Dollar Tree does carry wood contact paper so you can make the images look like wood now to mimic pipes, I'm using the wooden handles from toilet plungers you buy at Dollar Tree. I had Matt keep the length of those toilet plungers but slightly cut them down so that this weird part that's at the bottom of the toilet plunger wasn't showing. So I had two pieces with just the ends cut off and then I had him cut some wood pieces down to four roughly five inch long pieces. So what I did is I laid out my two shelves and then attached those two pieces of wood from the toilet plunger handle to the shelves using wood glue. You can use other items. I've said this so many times. There's so many other ways you can always do any of my DIYs. You can add screws, you can add nails to attach them, but I'm just using wood glue. Once I have those two pieces glued on, I glue on the four roughly five inch pieces. Now I had those cut to be short than the width of the shelves on purpose because I didn't know what I was using for the back at this point when I was doing this, and I didn't want to overcut and have the shelves not be flat against the wall. Now because I'm filming this, I tend to rush things. I want to get it done more quickly. What you would do is you would wait for the two pieces in the front to completely adhere to the shelves and then flip it over and attach the other four pieces. But because I wanted this all to be attached overnight so that I could um, stain it the next day, I had to find some items to give each piece a little bit more height so it can attach properly the way I wanted it to. Because like I said, each piece is not the exact width of the shelves and the two pieces in the front. They're shorter. So I just used some mirror from Dollar Tree but like I said you more than likely aren't filming this and you're just gonna make it for yourself so you just wait for the two pieces in the front to dry once they dry flip the entire thing over and then attach the other four pieces you're more than likely not gonna have to stack things under like I did after I had everything glued on I fell asleep I let it completely dry and then the next day I stained it so the part of the piping I'm calling it piping so that it kind of looks like pipes I don't know I'm going to be staining that using Min Wax Stain in Ebony. So it's almost like a black stain. You can use acrylic paint. All you have to do is water down the acrylic paint. Use more water than paint, mix it together, and then you can stain your wood that way. You can get a nice acrylic paint for as little as 59 cents at Walmart. Wood stain is not expensive, and when you buy it, you know you have a lot to use for other projects but if you want something just on the less expensive side you don't plan on staining a bunch of wood 
just get an acrylic paint, mix it with some water, and you can stain it that way. So after I stained the parts of the wood that are supposed to be black, black, I then went ahead and took this Vera Thane Dark Walnut Stain. I got it at Home Depot, and I stained the shelves. So this is just um, like a... Honestly, it's not a dark walnut color. It's more like a golden oak color to me. It's not dark walnut at all. I don't know. But I like the color. It's just not dark walnut. Now, I wanted to add something to the back to make it look a little more like pipes. So I'm using the lids from Mason Jars. I got at Dollar Tree to mimic this. I'm using four total. The circle top of the Mason Jar isn't attached to the rest of the lid. So I grabbed some glue and glued the circle part to the rest of the lid so it wouldn't be falling off. And then you can take those pieces and glue them to the back of the four roughly five inch pieces. You can also take a thinner nail and just nail those lids into the wood. So I actually did a mixture of both of them. If you plan on using the lids as the way to hang your shelf onto the wall, I recommend nailing it versus just the E6000. But if it's going to be floating there and not really attached to the wall that way, which is the way I had it, you can get away with just putting the E6000. To get my shelving unit to hang on the wall, I'll be using the eye hooks from this picture hanging kit from Dollar Tree. I use three eye hooks on the top shelf and three on the bottom. I just take the hook and use my hand and some pressure to twist the eye hook into the wood. I didn't use any drill bit, a nail, anything to create a hole, just some pressure to twist the hook in. If you have a hard time gripping the eye hook to twist it in, you can use pliers to hold it. I had to use pliers when I was filming with the camera in the way because I couldn't get a good enough grip in the awkward position I was in. But you can see right here, the camera was not in my way. So I was able to use my hand to shimmy the eye hook into the wood and twist it without using pliers. It's not hard to do at all. Next, I decided to paint the mason jar lids black. It looks nice with the gold lids, but to match my personal home decor. I painted the lids black. It just went better with everything I have. I also brought some of the paint up around the wood to make it look a little bit more like the pipe connectors. Now all that was left to do is to hang the shelf to my wall. I made markings on my wall and started to nail nails into it. You can use command strips with this. You just need to make sure you use the appropriate command strips that you're using enough command strips to hold the weight of the shelf. The shelf honestly doesn't weigh a lot. I would say it weighs under 10 pounds, but you know, if you're going to be using command strips, you don't want to put anything too heavy on the shelves and you want to use the right amount of the command strips. When I hammered the nails in, I made sure I hammered them so that they would wedge the hooks between the nails and the wall. And that's it for this farmhouse style shelf. It cost me $12 to make because I had all the glue and wood stain already on hand. If I added the glue and wood stain, it would cost me around $22 to make. If you need E6000 and don't get the stain and just get acrylic paint instead, this project should cost you around $16 to $18 to make. But remember, whether you need more glue, you need wood stain or acrylic paint, you will always have leftover of these items to use for other projects. So so that's it for this tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.